Down Station. Joining me live in the studio is Rich Sherman of Alta Realty, straight from the Five. Yeah. How's it going, man? Uh, the Five is a bit of a parking lot. It's it's rough going south. It's taken me thirty five minutes to get here from basically the mall. You know what's crazy? I don't see Eight any. Miles. Yeah, I don't see any incidents on the board according to CHP. But I'll tell you, I have a theory because I drive in from the west side every day, okay. and I have a theory that. Uh, it's all these lane changes that people try to make. Yeah. Instead of just staying the course, literally staying in their lane, they clog up the traffic by trying to uh, get wherever they're going a minute later. Well, I don't know what's so hard before. about you go, I go, you go, I go, you go, I go. That, that's how it works. That's how we all get going as quickly as we can. People You're think they're getting, special, getting Rich. Impressed. Well, I'm special, but still, <laughs> you go, I go, you go, I go. That's still the best way to do this. You're a man of the people, and uh, it that. shows in your work, all to realty, is a... Is it a boutique a real estate firm? No, I wouldn't say that. We're, we're there, you know, we're pretty well manned. We have a lot of files. We do a lot of work. You know, I wouldn't say boutique exactly, but we keep we keep busy. Yeah, you call definitely us do. Call like as long as you call us. So you started out as a real estate agent when you were 19 years old. 18, yeah, 18. I was 18. Yeah, I was 18 when I got involved. Did you take Did you take classes straight out of high school? Uh, well, actually, I was. It was just my attempt to avoid getting a real job. My right. mom insisted <laughs> I get my My mom insisted I get my real estate license, and she was met with, "What am I ever going to use that for?" And she wouldn't let it leave off about it, so I finally just got my license. And the next thing I know, here I am, rough almost thirty years later, and it's been it's been good to me. When you so. were taking the classes, were you the youngest one in the? Oh, class? by far. Oh, yeah, yeah by far. Yeah. Did you know about mortgages or anything before? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I had a bit of I had curiosity about it because the mortgage system isn't that complicated, but everybody seems to think it is, and it's such a bizarre system. I mean, the way mortgages are computed, I mean, the math is there, but it's it's just so contrary to anything else or any other part of your life. I took an interest in one thing, just sort of led to another. So you get out of school, you're a hotshot teenager. Yeah, you got the world in front of you. And uh, do you go to work immediately at a big real estate agency? Well, I did. I was actually in college at the time. And while I was still in uh, college, I, uh, Realty Executives was nice enough to hire me. And I kind of, my career started there and did very well there and had a very good time. They were very good to me. I learned an awful lot there. And then after a while, it was just time to go off on my own. And I've been at various companies. I've owned various companies and things. And we got involved pretty heavily in mortgages in um, loan modification defense, God, over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, because I just thought the way the banks were behaving was really, really wrong. And it hasn't changed a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, you made a move. You eventually ended at uh, Alta Realty, mm -hmm. which, uh, what is the philosophy of the Sherman team? <laughs> at Alta the Sherman team? Well, we, uh, <laughs> we try to do the best. We try to do right by our clients, and we try to do the best we possibly can. We try to save houses. There are a number of things that we do that other people don't do because of that. Uh, we're just, we consider ourselves a bit more full service. We consider ourselves a little better at this than most people are, nothing against other realtors. We just hold ourselves to a higher standard, and I think our, our work product shows that. Some of the programs, I was looking at the website, and you can go to the website, uh, Rich Sherman, that's S Z E R M A N dot com, Rich Sherman dot com, and a couple of the services that I don't think a lot of or if any, real estate uh, teams offer. I don't know what it is we do. Uh, we've got a couple. Um, the first is we have something called the rental rebate program, where if you're renting a property, we will literally give you money to go buy a house. People like that, give you money. <laughs> they, they dig that. Uh -huh. And as a result, we sell a lot more houses. Uh, there's also one called the resale renovation program, which is for sellers, where we'll come in and we'll actually put money into your house to fix it up for sale, because we know that houses in the best condition sell for the most money the fastest, mm -hmm. and that's good for us too. It's really good for our clients. We do a right. lot of work there. And then, of course, the big one, which we've been doing for many, many years, kind of the most popular of them, is the uh, foreclosure defense and the loan modifications, which we do for free. And on that topic, I have a story to tell today. Yeah, please. The floor is yours. Well, I've been I've been warning people for quite some time about something we call zombie seconds, and just to sort of refresh the audience here, a zombie second is a second mortgage that you did not know or other lien that you did not know was on your house. You thought it was charged off, you thought it was paid off, you thought it was reconveyed, you thought it was gone, and here we are five or ten years on and suddenly you just get a letter in the mail that says, hey, give us, give us a bunch of money or else we're taking your house. The bank's coming back for their money. Yeah, well, it's, it's usually not a bank. What usually will happen to a zombie mortgage is it'll be, it'll be bought and sold and bought and sold and bought and sold in what they call the secondary market until what I refer to as a bottom feeder. Some people call them venture capitalists. I call them vulture capitalists. <laughs> Uh, we'll have bought these things usually for very, very uh, a lot less than the face value of the note, and then they come back and they say, "Hey, you haven't made your payment for X amount of days, months, years, whatever years usually, uh, so you owe us all this money." In this particular case, I want to talk to you about a house in particular where this this uh, very nice uh, woman, elderly woman, uh, I won't use her name on the air because I'm sure she would appreciate that. Elderly, elderly, elderly woman, she has a house and she uh, her first mortgage was current. She's fine with her first. She, at some point, had taken out a $39,000 second. $39,000, that number's going to become important. Um, 
she got a letter in the mail saying, like a lot of people did in 2008, 2009, she got a letter in the mail that said uh, her loan has been charged off. No further payments are necessary. Oh. Now, if you got a letter in the mail that said your loan has been charged, due to the economic downturn, mm-hmm. your loan has been charged off, very important term, and no further payments are necessary, I, you would think, hey, done deal. One less thing to worry about, right? Yeah, right. Good for me. It's a blessing. Doesn't mean that. Charged off does not mean the same to you and me as it means to the banks. To the banks, charged off just means they're taking a tax write off on it. It does not invalidate the debt. So that's why we call these things zombie seconds, because they bounce around the secondary market, they get bought by somebody else, and they come along and say, hey, remember that $39,000 loan you took out eight years ago? Yeah, it's now $93,000, and you'll pay, and these are all these are accurate numbers, $93,556 and change. Yikes. And you will pay us every penny of that in the next 30 days, or we're taking your house. And that's what happened to this client. She got that letter in the mail. Her first response was to call the, uh, the people who sent the letter, a lender called FCI, who's a servicer for these sort of things. They're not mm-hmm. the actual lender. And uh, FCI said, yep, uh, it's, the, it's owned by a company called West Coast Investors. They bought the loan, and we're servicing it for them, and they intend to foreclose. You probably better give them that 100000 bucks. And she said, I don't have $100,000 to give you. In fact, yeah. my house doesn't have $100,000 in equity in it. I basically, my house is worth basically what I owe on my first. She owed about 220000 on her first, a little less than that. Her house is worth about 220000 So when did she figure cost of sale? She has no equity in this house. Mm-hmm. So that's when we get involved. She called us up. We get a lot of these calls. Uh, hey, what do I do? And these people are threatening me with my house. We say, hey, it's a zombie second. We know what's going on. We'll contact them, see if we can't work out a settlement. Because basically they bought this loan for a lot less than $100,000 they are demanding from you. Let's see if we can find a way to work out something where you can give them payments. They'll back off. They'll collect their money. Everybody's happy. But the new wave in these zombie seconds, and that's why these are particularly nasty, is these guys have no intention of servicing the debt. None. They're a quick kill artist. They're no different than holding up the stage and, and demanding the, the, the strong box. You know, that's, they that's know the, that the, the homeowner does not have that money. Yeah, they, know. they, they only want have the their house. house. Yeah, they want the house. Yeah, right. They want the house. So in this particular case, uh, there's a fella at West Coast Investors, which is a very small company. I'm told there are only five people who work there. They, they're a very tiny little office, and, and, but they're curiously well-funded out of a little office in Huntington Beach. And the fellow who works there, and he, he said, go ahead and use his name. His name is Marcel Weiss, or Weiss, W-E-I-S-E. And we've been working with Mr. Weiss here for over a year trying to get this sorted out. And his response has been, we will not take payments. We will not take a lump sum unless it's the total amount that is owed. We will not, we will not, we will not. I'm, I've got a file full of things he will not do. Basically, give us the 93500 and change that we're, that we're owed, or we're taking the house. Right. Which is a ridiculous position. Now, with a little bit of checking, we were able to find out that they actually bought this loan for $35,000. So here's a loan that they paid 35000 for, that they're now insisting this woman who does not have the money, give them 100000 or they're taking their house. Yeah. So we went through this. 60000 close to over insane, what they paid it's for. Insane, insane. So a ridiculous profit margin. And they know they have no hope of collecting that. Yeah. So we work with them, we work with them, we work trying to get this worked out. And to make a, a, an excruciatingly long story short, because this has been going on for over a year now, uh, they wouldn't do anything. So finally, uh, the homeowner filed bankruptcy. You would think a bankruptcy should be the thing that protects you. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, the, the way the law works, and this is what I'm here to warn people about, Unless the first mortgage over-encumbers the property, in other words, unless you owe more on the first than the property is worth, if it's $1 more, you're toast. A bankruptcy will not protect you except for a limited period of time. Mm -hmm. So what West Coast uh, investors did is they went into the bankruptcy court and they said, you know what, Your Honor, we're owed this money, we have the legal right to collect, which they do because a lot of loopholes in the law that allow this. Mm -hmm. Um, She has to give us all her money, we're taking the house because the house is worth $221, she only owes $220 against it, sorry. Yeah, And the judge tried so hard because she knew what was going on and she tried very hard to find a way to make this work. But the law has not caught up with the industry. That's what goes on with these zombie seconds. These guys have found this way to subvert the law, to pervert the law, it's my way of thinking, uh, and take people's homes. So, to make a, so they foreclose on the house. They, they get the house out of bankruptcy. They foreclose on this house. This woman has lived in this house for 15, almost 20 years. And now she doesn't own the house anymore. Right. Uh, a week and a half ago, they took the house. So they're trying That's to throw brutal. her out. So to add insult to injury, I get a call from Mr. Weiss uh, earlier this week, and he said he's completely forgotten about all of our negotiations. He's completely forgotten about everything we talked about, everything that's happened in this file, mispronounces my name, doesn't remember who we are. Yeah, right. Call me whatever he wants. Call me Santa Claus if he wants. It saves our house. And he, uh, he has an offer, you see. They're going to generously offer to rent her back her home. Oh, my so God. So now that they've stolen her home, they've decided, you know what would be the magnanimous <laughs> thing to do, the nice thing to do here? Let's offer to rent this elderly woman back the home that we stole from her. That's cruel. So they should now send her money. They sh- she should now send them money so she can stay living in the home that they've stolen from her. And I will use the word stolen. I know it's legal. I get it. It's still theft. Just because it's legalized doesn't mean it's not theft. Yeah, right. Um, 
And as an added benefit, and because uh, uh, I think this would be fun to do on the radio, when I spoke to Mr. Weiss, I said, why did you do this? You will not sell this house for any more than you had an offer for. In the middle of all this, we'd had a short sale. We tried that as a remedy as well. Sure. You will not sell this house for any more than you were offered a year ago. You will not get any more money out of this note. In fact, you're going to get a lot less money out of this note than you were offered over a year ago. And you know what his response was? What's that? Whoops. I guess we paid too much for this loan. And when I was done, I'm not speechless often, as you can tell. Yeah, right. But uh, <laughs> when I picked my job off the floor, I just said, whoops. Your response to why you took this woman's home is whoops. And he reiterated. He said, yeah, I guess we shouldn't, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't have bought this one. This is happening on a regular basis. I understand the guy who has a drug problem, who holds up a liquor store because he's going to get money out of it to feed his habit. I get that sort of criminal. But this sort of, I'm going to just call it legalized crime, if there is such a thing, legalized crime by stupidity, mm -hmm. must stop. This woman has been in this home for a long time, nearly 20 years. She thought she was building equity in her house. She thought she was through the financial crisis. I would start all this for her was a car accident, which was not her fault. Mm -hmm. um, she thought she was through this crisis. It's been dogging her for years. She thought she was through it. Now, surprise, they've taken her home. And the reason they took her home was, and I want to say this again, whoops. They've made absolutely no attempt. Now their attitude is they're going to sell the house to somebody else. They're going to pass on their problem to somebody else, their note anyway to somebody else. Right. Uh, and they haven't made good on the first. They just the second is foreclosed. So what I would like to ask the viewers to do with your permis permission. Yeah, go for it. And I did talk to the station about this first, is I think we should all call Mr. Weiss and ask him why he whoops this file. I think it's the responsible thing to do as the public to call him up and say, Mr. Weiss, how come you and West Coast Investors, this company that with five people in it who is curiously well-funded out of a little office in Huntington Beach, how come you guys foreclosed on the house on Meredith? Uh, that's the name of the house. It's the name of the street. It's on Meredith Avenue in Palmdale. Uh huh. I think we ought to ask him because I think we deserve an answer better than whoops. Yeah. So for your listeners who would like to do this, we okay. very much appreciate it. Yeah, get out the number. The number is 949 322 8890. That number again, 949 322 8890. Now, the reason I would like to ask all the listeners to call is because there is no legislation that prevents this sort of activity. I've been to Sacramento many times trying to, trying to uh, lobby for this. There's no political will for this on either side of the aisle. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they understand the size of this problem. Uh, I've been talking about this for almost, almost two years now. I have in my office right now over 25 of these files. When I started this year, I think I had four. Um, I'm going to have more of them. Right. Because people go to refi the letter, they get these letters in the mail, they realize these things are suddenly there, and you have no way to tell. It doesn't show up on your credit report. It only shows up on your title. So these guys come out of the woodwork, these, these horrible, horrible uh, uh, venture capitalists come out of the woodwork, and they steal people's homes. They found a legalized way to steal their homes. So I think we ought to ask Mr. Weiss why that's okay. Uh, and again, his name is Marcel Weiss. West Coast Investors is the name of the company, and he said he is the guy to call. Uh, his number is 949-322-8890. And I think the only way that this sort of activity, this sort of behavior is going to stop with these guys is if we as a public stand up and say, hey, quit it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a basic tenant. And in all societies, that if there is no police force, if there is no cop on the beat, if there are no rules to prevent a thief within your midst, midst, the only way to prevent it is for all of us to stand up, point at the person, and say, hey, stop. Right. And unless and until we're all willing to do that, this is going to go on. And what happens is people don't talk to each other about this. They don't know the problem that they're having. So let's all give Mr. Weiss a call and see what he has to say about this. Let's call I, him I'd Mr. Like Weiss. I don't, I don't even want to call him Mr. Weiss. Let's yeah, call him Mr. Weiss. Weiss, Weiss, Weiss whatever. Name. Good old Marcel. Yeah, he doesn't um, remember your name. No, but that's okay. He doesn't need to remember my name. I just need to save these people's homes. And right. let's prevent them from doing this nonsense ever again. And he's not alone. There are hundreds of companies out here that have sprung up that do this. He's gregarious. He's altruistic. He's, He's the go-to realtor <laughs> in the Santa Cruz Valley. He's Rich Sherman of Alta Realty. Contact him and the entire Alta team at 661-253-3000. That's 253-3000. Also, richsherman.com. That's Sherman, S-Z-E-R-M-A-N. Let me just add one little thing. The yeah. quickest way to get a hold of me is my cell phone. I answer that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just sort of my – I like what I do a lot, so it doesn't bother me when people call me. You can also text me anytime, 24 hours a day. That number is 661-714-1400. That number again, 661-714-1400. If I sound like I'm angry, it's because I am. 661-714-1400. This nonsense with these seconds has got to stop. Well, Rich, I appreciate you coming in, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, sir. Of course. All right, time for a quick break. Traffic on the 8s coming up.